is a gold finger. But there's no time to die. Okay. What's going on, guys and gals, and welcome to Good Real Hunting. We hunt for the good reels, so you don't have to. It's your boy Brad. The Brett man's right over here, and Chris is right underneath us. Hold on. And to- Hold on. The name's Bert. James Bert. Oh. Yes, it is. Today, we're going to be talking about No Time to Die, which is the highly anticipated upcoming new bond flick coming october the 8th i believe uh of course coming from carrie joji fukunaga and uh, this is actually a repeat of bert and i's very third episode of the channel back in uh, september of last year but some new news has come out and uh you know we've recently watched some of these uh craig daniel craig bond flicks so we wanted to kind of revisit our expectations for no time to die since it's really you know it's coming out next month uh well two months less than two months at this point um, so we're excited to talk about it. We're also ob- obviously we're going to be ta- uh, starting the Bond uh, review series, Daniel Craig Bond review series, pretty soon, and we're really excited to kind of get into it. Um, so we just wanted to kind of jump into this and talk some No Time to Die, and I'm pumped, man. Um, yeah, I'm super stoked about it. I'm super stoked too. And if you love James Bond, and uh, we love James Bond, and we've done a couple of James Bond videos on this channel already, so if you want to check them out, there is a link above my head right there so be sure to check them out because we did have a fun video of like uh getting like switching out like the bond actors into different bond movies so that's a really fun video one of my personal favorite videos actually right yes and of course again like i said we're gonna have those reviews coming out pretty soon for the craig era movies uh do don't watch our first no time to die expectation video because that was really <laughs> that was a long time ago so you know lots changed since then uh, but you know, nonetheless, it's there if you're feeling eager. Chris, how you doing today? Man, I feel great. I uh, haven't made it through all the Bond flicks yet, but have gone back and started this revisitation, if you will. And uh, I got to say, man, they're pretty fucking good. I like them a lot. Man, they, I, uh, am I like mo- them a lot. But yeah, Damn man, God. like I'm more happier than um, Silva C M again. Ooh, he was pretty jacked on that uh, in that sequence there. So yeah, he had a good smile be- on his face. Oh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, obviously this movie was supposed to originally come out in 2019. Uh, sorry, 2020. Well, actually, it was 2019 originally, and then it got pushed mm-hmm. out to uh, April of 2020 and then October of 2020 and then April of 2021 and now October freaking 2021. So hopefully, Take fingers time. crossed, uh, things uh, work in our favor here. I feel good about it. It seems like movies are coming out left and right. So. Um, it wasn't 2019, was it? It was 20. It was April of last year. Was its original? Yeah, it was April of last year because that was coming out it was, the weekend of my birthday weekend, and I was so was, jacked. I was getting tickets, and then they yeah. say it's canceled, and I got pissed. And then they, the original, the original plan was for it to come out in 2019 uh, originally, oh. uh, but they had some issues. They changed directors three months prior. Originally, this was going to be directed by Danny Broyle, and then three months prior oh, yeah. to uh, mm-hmm. production, they swapped over to Kerry Joji. Fukunaga. Um, but yeah, so, uh, but yeah, that, so that was, it's been, you know, kind of pushed back and back and back and, and whatnot. But, yeah, you know, and, and then they did in April of 2021. 20, uh, I was jacked again, like, yeah, birthday. Here we go, redemption time. And then they're like, no, we're going to push it back to October. I'm like, well, fuck. Like, man, do you on, remember man. how it's distraught he worse. was, Brad? Yeah, oh, I, he was distraught, man. He was, I was pumped. so pissed. <clears throat> Now I guess to come out in the middle of Halloween Horror Month, dude. What the hell? Oh, I know way. that and the week before um, Halloween Kills too. So I'm like, come on, man! Like, put it out in November, like all the other Daniel Craig Bond movies were. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But you know, either way, it's coming. I'm Jack. We're all jacked. So let's get into this thing and and kind of what we're excited about. Uh, now I've already kind of mentioned it before. Um, obviously, this thing is it swept over from Danny Broyle to Kerry Joji Fukunaga, who's most That's, known, I think, for I don't think there's an R there. No, it doesn't matter. Not that it matters, but someone's probably going to correct Kerry oh, Joji Fukunaga. He, he's doing a lot better. No, than I the, do it. Oh, Boyle. It's Danny Boyle. Boyle? Did I say what did I say? Broyle. 
I didn't say, did I say broil? Yeah, <laughs> yes, well, yeah, he did. If I did, I'm sorry. He's not broiling any freaking baskets of fish today. <laughs> but, you know, maybe I thought about it a lot. I didn't mean to say that, but. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> broil. Broil. Let's broil away, the freaking shrimp on the bob, shall we? But anyway, Where's swapped not... over. <laughs> Carrie Joji. Uh, martini. Carrie Joji took over. And he's most known for that first, you know, season of True Detective. I think he's still involved, but that was his, mm. uh, he, you know, that was his baby that first season, which is incredible. I One think you mean the, uh, yeah, the, the best, the best single season of any TV show in history. I could agree with that. I agree I, with I that. I, so. I, I don't disagree. So that being said, uh, what do you guys think about the direction choice? Does this excite you? Are you going to miss Sam Mendes? What are you thinking here? Oh man, I'm gonna miss Sam Mendes so much just because he did that beautiful movie called Skyfall. He also did Spectre. Oh, I know, and both of those are really good movies. But damn, Skyfall, and well, I'll get in more on that discussion. Uh, but I wish Sam Mendes could have stayed, uh, just because um, I, I liked uh, like his directing style. I think he has a really good vision of the James Bond character and that world. So, uh, and the guy you mentioned, because I'm not even going to attempt to say that name um i i i'm concerned um but i i like bond so i'm just going to give it a shot and daniel craig's personally my favorite james bond of all the james bond actors even though sean connery's really damn close to it's just i'm i'm ready for it i've waited uh so damn long and i just wanted to get here right on chris what do you think about uh carrie joji yeah, man. I think we should just refer to him as CJF from here on out. I mean, I think it just simplifies everything. But uh, <laughs> you know, Good I uh, I loved Skyfall, and I think that uh, Quantum and Spectre both kind of suffered because Casino and Skyfall were so good, right? Mm -hmm. I think that they were tough acts to follow. So you know, Quantum and Spectre are kind of uh, viewed as the the lesser, you know, of the of the franchise plus a specter the script leaked and they never they didn't bother to re like to have many rewrites or anything and there was a lot of shit that went on with it i don't think sam mendes even wanted to uh to come back and they pretty much just like coaxed him into it uh if memory <clears> serves <throat> so uh but i i'm fine with this choice i i think um I do wonder though because there was like you know he was supposed to direct it uh originally mm -hmm. And then, like, why did that fall apart exactly? You know, like, is he problematic? Uh, I don't know. Um, that was probably the only the only question that I had. That, and I don't think that he's ever really done action before. But I mean, as we right. can see in the trailers, I mean, I think the action is uh, it looks really good. Um, but he had never really done anything, you know, this big. Actually, I think the other the only other thing that I can even think of that he directed that was a that was sort of big was the. Uh, Beasts of No Nation uh, for Netflix uh, mm -hmm. with with uh, Idris Elba in there. And so uh, I, I, I'm i fine with it. You know, I, I mean, I think that, that, that he'll do uh, a good job. I mean, I, I think that he knows what's up with, with telling a great story. And I just worry about the, you know, is the action going to suffer really is my only question. Well, uh, I'll um, I, add on to the action part of it. Um, you say he doesn't do like a whole lot of action movies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, to, according to that trailer, it, like it looks pretty damn actioning to me. Which I bet you, if uh, if he didn't know how to do um, action, he probably brought someone on to the kind of like the cast or not cast, but like the crew that knows about action, how to display action to kind of help the director out. Uh, that's kind of like what I got from the trailer and from what you just said. So I'm actually not worried about that at all. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, from what we saw in the trailer, the action does look pretty solid. I'm happy mm -hmm. about it. Um, I, here's what I think about the transition. I think Sam Mendes, while he did a phenomenal job with Skyfall, I think Spectre, and we'll talk more about this in review for Spectre coming up. So be sure to tune in for that. But I think Spectre was, uh, it lacked a lot of, I don't know. It seemed like they were, it seemed like almost, it almost seemed like everybody in that movie was kind of going through the motions at that point. Like an autopilot, seem, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, even Daniel Craig, I mean, it, it was, it seemed like everything was just kind of there and they went, they made the movie cause they had to make a movie. Um, so I think some of that passion maybe was missing maybe from Sam Mendes and that, and that mm -hmm. he kind of touched on it. I think he was kind of forced to do it coerced or whatever. 
Um, and I think that shows. So I'm excited to change uh, gears here. Um, I am kind of interested to see what Danny Boyle would have come up with. Yeah. Uh, what he would have put together. <laughs> I think that could have been really interesting. So, um, uh, but, you know, I, I, True Detective, I love so much. I know t- TV shows are uh, a huge difference from, you know, a, a blockbuster, you know, huge high budget movie here. But um, he did uh, such a great job telling a story in that and, and really getting to know the characters and, and, the performances we got from that, that, that might be my fa- my favorite Matthew McConaughey performance of all time that he was able to get from him uh, in that movie. Definitely yeah. one of my favorite characters of all time. Woody Harrelson as well, right? So mm-hmm. I think he knows how to direct actors. Hopefully he can get a solid performance out of Craig for his, you know, his go home movie here. Um, and I think he will be able to. From what I've seen in the trailer so far, it looks like Craig's a little bit more alive in this one than he was in the last one. So mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited, man. I, I, I think, you know, it's, it's obviously a big step up for him, but you know, I think, um, he's shown in the past that he can put some good stuff together. So I'm excited to see what he's doing. Yeah. And I'm starting to remember part of the trailer too, in my head of like what I last saw. And I will go ahead and throw out another little concern. Um, bond, the bond, like the Daniel Craig ones, like with Casino Royale and um, Skyfall, they do a really good job to not make it feel too cinematic like with like overflowing with action and explosions and all that. Um, But, and this one really kind of like feels more of a cinematic, like a more, one of the most cinematic bomb movies out there. So I am a little concerned with that. Hopefully they don't go too far with it. Kind of like the specter level of it. I just kind of want them to keep it leveled. Kind of like with um, Skyfall and Casino Royale did. Yeah, that would be yeah. cool. Um, now, granted, this thing is coming in uh, two hours and 43 minutes long, which is the longest Bond film to date. Ooh. So I think there's going to be a lot of room for action and for drama and everything in between. There's going to be room for things to breathe. I don't know. It might end up being too long. We'll see. But Hey, that's um, my complaint right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I'm not going to complain because, you know, this is our last chance with Craig and um, – and I'm excited, you know. I I just the more Craig we can get here at the end, the better, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they have to finish him out strong, uh, most definitely, just because again he has such a good track of like playing the James Bond character, and I would really hate uh, for No Time to Die to end on a dud. Um, because uh, I, I'm actually thankful for No Time to Die because if we didn't get this movie and we ended it on Spectre. That was a dud. So this is a chance for Daniel Craig to redeem himself for that last performance. Definitely. Yeah, and I remember there be even being talk before where he had mentioned that he was he was going to quit, I believe, uh, before Spectre or something like that. And he was he it's, it just spoke openly about how he was kind of burnt out on it. But when he talks about this one, uh, the interviews and things that I've seen, uh, it seems like you know he was really. Uh, excited to come back and kind of close the story out. And I think that probably, you know, with the new director as well, kind of maybe reinvigorated some things in the way they were going to, they were going to bring it to life. So uh, I don't know. I I think, uh, I think they'll do it justice in one way. That's a good point because I think um, there was one thing that kind of excites me about this and that's Craig's excitement uh, to come back. There was, you know, he did say that after Spectre, didn't go very well, I guess, the production. He, he, he mentioned the quote is he would rather cut his wrist than play Bond again at the point, you know, after, yeah. after that movie came out. That's rough. Um, so, yeah, he, he didn't have a good time. You know, he's been injured a lot. He's done a lot of his own stunts for this, uh, for this, you know, for his four movies. And he's been injured mm-hmm. a lot. He's had a lot. He's had broken bones and surgeries and, and whatever. So, I mean, I, it's understandable. Uh, but there's one thing that he, he was excited to come back for No Time to Die because and I don't know what it is. I mean, we can only speculate at this point. But the script has a uh, a tying of a knot, a tying of a loose end, you could say, from Casino Royale. This came out recently that there was there was something to kind of tie the knot of the Vesper Lynn storyline to tie that loose end. Ooh. And that's what got him to come back for this role. I think he said that that was the reason there's a direct kind of connection to his first movie, Casino Royale, that got him excited to come back and and play Bond once more, because I think originally he wasn't really wanting to. Um, so that's kind of got me excited because there's something he's got a little passion for that. He's obviously there's something here that make, made him want to come back and and close things off. And uh, that excites me a little bit. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, because I love that uh, dynamic between Vesper and Bond. And uh, I would love, like, anytime we can get, like, a Vesper kind of, like, tie-in, I'm always going to be a fan for. And I actually think, uh, since you brought that up, Brad, um, I think the scene where uh, Bond goes up to meet Blofeld, uh, that could uh, really, that could be the scene that kind of ties in that missing piece that you just mentioned. Possibly. Definitely. I think so. Yeah, I mean, it seems Which, like they're they're really trying to, not just with Casino, but I think there's really trying to pull all, you know, pull all of these together into one cohesive story and kind of bring it full circle and, mm -hmm. and find some way to make, you know, all these storylines kind of uh, connect in a meaningful way here at the end, which would be the, be the, the, you know, prime way to end it, the right way to end it, you know, anyways. Definitely. I think so too. Um, which by the way, mentioning Blofeld, he is the first, uh, Christoph Waltz is the first, Blofeld's been in the franchise many times in the 60s and uh, in 70s. And Christoph Waltz is the first one to actually reprise the role and come back a second time. Fun fact. I didn't know that until I was mm -hmm. just thinking about it. And I saw it in some of the trivia here. Um, so that's cool. But, you know, whatever. Uh, we got, yeah, our boy uh, Donald Pleasant's foe. Yeah, man. He was classic in the role. He oh, kind yeah. of uh, he kind of he kind of started that uh, Dr. Evil, you know? <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that kind of gets me into some of the more of the, uh, the cast here. I mean, obviously we got Craig coming back. Uh, Leah Sedu is coming back. Sedu, Leah Sedu, whatever her name is, uh, who played, uh, freaking Dr. Uh, Swanson, uh, Lynn Swanson, I believe. In no, uh, Ma like Madeline Swan. Madeline. Yeah. Uh, Lynn Swan, Mad Swan, Samsonite. Uh, but anyway, she was in the spectrum. Swim, She's coming swami. back to play her role. And she's actually a character I really enjoyed in Spectre. She, I thought she was a highlight of the movie. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see her come back, which another fun fact, uh, this is going to be the first Bond girl to return and uh, in the franchise out of all 25 movies. Oh, now, shit. There, yeah. well, there was one, no time to die. There was one, no time to die or not. No time to die. Dr. No, that came back and, uh, and, uh, uh, from Rush with Love, briefly, very small role, but this is a major role. This is a major uh, return of a uh, Bond girl that I think she's going to continue to grow, and you know their love interest may continue to grow. Now it looks like in the trailer that they've since separated uh, somewhat, but we'll see how it transpires. Um, I think it's not, just, it's not based off the trailer, though. It's based off the uh, actual theme song of this movie too. <laughs> Yes. I think that she comes back into the frame and she is alive for about 15 minutes and then she dies. Ooh, Ooh. that could be interesting. Well, that kind of makes <laughs> sense when you're in, like involving the ever two Bond girls in this movie. Um, actually, really one in particular like that. So, Chris, that actually, it's not a bad prediction, my friend. I think that, that Rami uh, Malik's character has something to do with her and she shows back up very briefly to give James some bad news and bring him back into the fold. And then she's killed off. Yeah. It looks like in the trailer that he's actually going to her in the movie. Like he's trying to warn her about something like they've since and, split up. And, and I should say it has been a while since I've actually watched the whole trailer. Um, yeah. So like I, she I, opened, I really can't remember. Yeah. She, like, she opened the box and saw the mask that like the main villain has on. And then that's when she immediately like gets teared up. Like, not just like tear of sadness, tear of fear. And then that's when it's like, oh shit. And then that's when Bond figures out and he gets pissed. And I think he was the one that breaks up with her uh, just because she's been living a lie. And plus, from Spectre, she uh, kind of knows the life of a spy and all that. So she could be keeping all this important information from James. Um, so I'm really interested to see how all that unfolds. That would be interesting. That would be cool. I, I mean, again, like I said, I like her character. I wouldn't mind if at the end of this thing, uh, Craig and her run off to the sunset, kind of like they did with the Spectre, but this time it's forever um, kind of deal. And uh, and then we kind of figure out, but then again, I don't know what the, it depends on how they're going to continue the franchise after Craig leaves. But um, mm -hmm. but what yeah, about the, a, uh, you know, I mean, you guys obviously know that Vesper faked her death, right? Oh, come on now. She no, didn't take no death. There's, there's no way. Like, uh, I, I did actually thought about that the other day. I'm like, no, there's no way they're going to pull that trigger. Yeah. But you guys have, I thought you guys had read the script, right? No. Nobody read the script, dude. Ah. There's no freaking, there's no, there's no damn faking <laughs> oh, death. Oh, Bert almost shat himself. 
Hold on, uh, I got, I'll be right back. <laughs> Go wipe those tidy whities off. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, I'm excited about it. I tell you one. Uh, so I think with that, I mean, th- there's a lot that could go on with that. I mean, I think that would be very interesting if what you said is true, Chris. I think that that could really take the story in an interesting direction, get a nice revenge plot here. Um, but, you know, I think uh, you know, time will tell what will happen. But I think I mean, I think she'll make it. I personally do. I think I mean, I'd be surprised if they killed her off. I think it'd be interesting. I'm not against it. But, you know, I think it would uh, it would definitely be a surprise for me. Mm hmm. Yeah, especially for like how quickly Chris is suggesting when Swan will get God. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I think she was. I don't know. We'll see. I, I think that would be cool. That would be interesting. And yeah, again, it all. Been... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say it all comes back to how they want to continue this franchise after Craig. If they're going to keep the same same continuity and just recast the role, then I don't know. Maybe they do kill off, uh, freaking Sedu, uh, because mm-hmm. at that point, you know. You don't want to have a new actor come in with her and be, you know, to get like that could be weird or whatever. So, you know, maybe that makes sense. I like that. I could I could see that uh, if they want to kind of reboot again, uh, then, you know, all bets are off if they, you know, how they want to do it. Yeah, like uh, that. If they are um, like this is the last one for Daniel Craig, I bet you a million bucks they'll reboot it with a new Bond actor. That, yeah, that's think, just yeah. that's just like for me personally, just because I, from this is going to be the final story of this particular bond. So it's going to be really hard to tell another story after this. And plus it wouldn't feel right to, uh, if you tell this story with another bond actor. So I feel like this is the last one. And then we are going to do a reboot. And so Swan, now my probability of her dying after Chris's bold prediction there has really gone up there like a good, probably 65%. You want to go for a hundred? (laughs) <laughs> i mean it, it just seems like something that's going to happen like uh that's just the way that they're going to introduce the story i'm really not even sure what i thought that it, i mean he's meant to be sort of retired at the beginning of this right yes like he sort of correct. left everything behind so he's living this happy life in jamaica and obviously yeah in jamaica and uh he uh obviously get some bad news and I think that, you know, it's her that does it. They have a little scuffle and I think something happens. They both get, yeah, it was that car chase too. And that's when they were arguing in the car, the very first trailer, they did that. Mm -hmm. And I think that she gets shot. She dies in his arms and that just kicks the whole thing into high gear. And I think along the way, you know, he, that's what brings him back into the, into, you know, duty or, what have you, and uh, and then, you know, figures out her secrets and all that along the way. Well, see, and that's the other thing, too, I'm remembering from the trailer, too. It's like they had that fight, they break up, Bond goes back uh, coming out of retirement, and he's uh, talking to Q, and they were going through this hallway, and then they turned a corner, and bam, there was Swan there. So, yeah, um, so it, it's going to be very interesting, but uh, I'll, Chris, again, I like your prediction. Uh, prediction that she could possibly die in this so i like I, i'm actually on that train right now she will die i don't know how uh or the reasoning for it or the methods but i feel like that's a really good possibility i'm gonna say no i'm still gonna say no um uh, but again again i'm not it's not that i'm against it i just i just don't think they're gonna i just don't think they're gonna make it man i just don't think they're gonna do it i just don't they might. It, I just, I just don't know. I just don't think they're going to do it. I would see, put but that explains. Life. But then, uh, how are you going to explain the ever Bond girl though? Because it's kind of well, weird Bond to goes- have this, like, have this Bond girl like um, come in and then like, oh, is he going to choose this new Bond girl or is he going to pick Swan? Well, just because there's other girls in the movie doesn't mean they're going to be love interests for Bond. Like, I mean, they, you could have other people in there. You know <laughs> well, what I mean? Yeah. yeah no, okay, I know you. Like, yeah, that's a, yeah. You're smoking. Listen, crack. this is a different. This is are a you, different. Are from- you doing pot? Listen, from you the very first, to get with money, listen, Penny. listen to this, dude. From the very first Daniel Craig movie, this has never been the same cliche as all the other Bond movies. I mean, we're talking from the very first moment, Casino Royale, he tries to order a martini and he says, it looks like I give a damn how you make it. I just want it. Like, this isn't the but same. But those are the origins of how he got that drink. I get it. I know. But this isn't, this isn't the same cliche Bond we've seen before. He's This Bond has always been more interested in the mission than the gals, as opposed to before. It's like, you know, whatever. He's attempting re-entry, sir. But anyway, that's not what's going on here. I think this, I, this, I, I think in this movie, he's got, you know, he obviously he loved Vesper. He loved her very much. She died. Oh, wow. That's sad. He's like, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. Four movies later, 
But he's been fucking. He's I mean, been fucking, you, but it's all been for been the fine. mission, man. It's all been for the mission. And uh, <laughs> he and guys, no, uh, no way this mission's getting solved unless I get this damn. <laughs> yeah, right and now. he oh, learned yeah. it, and he learned about his new favorite fruit, strawberries. And listen, this is this is uh, this has been going on, and 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 wow. he's actually like he never he never he never confirmed, he never said back to Miss Swan that he loved her, but you know he he expressed care and compassion for an Inspector. And I think like he's he's into that. They had a nice compassion moment there. He, he chose her at the end of Spectre. They went off together. He does care for her. So that I don't was think, a great I mean, scene. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's we're not I don't think we're gonna have I don't think just because there's other girls in the movie here that it's just automatically gonna be one of Bond's a Bond girl, so to speak. Um so there's there's obviously so that'll get us into the next little bit of cast here. We have uh Ana de Armas from uh from uh Knives out. Knives out that uh, that Daniel Craig personally selected for this movie, and I think mm-hmm. she's going to do a really good job. We saw her in the trailer kicking some ass. Uh, again, and though, knock, that looks knock. knock. Yes, yes, dude. Keanu, when he's got, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, that is such a horrible, horrible movie. I want to say that's it's awful. Oh, dude, it's so dude. entertaining though. Like I know it's bad, but it's so entertaining. Future episode uh, of what the fuck did we just watch? Right there. Yeah, that yeah, just... feature one right oh, there. Yes, please. Uh, but no, she whatever. gorgeous. Oh yeah, uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I know you, probably neither of you have seen that, but she's really, really good in that. She plays like mm-hmm. a, a projection program kind of thing. She's great. Yeah, I like yeah, and- like she looks. She's beautiful. Like to me, like she actually looks like she belongs. Like as the next kind of like Bond girl, or just like the next like bond like a nice bond character in the movie i feel like she's really like fitting the parts that she's been given and and uh, yes i think she looks great well shauna lynch is also going to be joining us here from uh, the captain marvel movie um she's actually going to be portraying she's going to be 007 daniel craig's going to be retired living in jamaica she's going to become 007 is how the movie's going to start out from what we've mm-hmm. learned in the you know some of the early promotions so you know obviously she's works for mi6 she's another agent and uh so i think and and uh if i'm not mistaken uh it looks like in the trailer that felix uh jeffrey wright introduces craig's character bond to anna de armis's character so i think i'm so glad that he's he's back me too man and that's another fun that's fact great. this is the first time that m q uh money penny and felix are going to be in the same movie since 1989 those are all long term Bond characters. This is the first time they're all going to be back together since License to Kill. Oh, awesome! Nice. Yeah, that that Lashana Lynch chick too, man. She's pretty smoking. I got to say, I think she's, she's going to go in this, and she's badass. Yes, I do. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was... hell yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to her character just to kind of see the banter between her and Bond. Uh, just kind of like, uh, you know, newer generation versus older generation. You know, it's like, oh, old can an old dog learn new tricks? So it'll be fun to kind of see that dynamic between the two. Yeah, I think that's it. Is she actually, is she not, would she not be uh, like 008? Or do they recycle? Well, so Bond's numbers? retired, so they just kind of recycled the numbers from there. I think mm-hmm. okay. they just kind of, you know, whoosh. you know, it's kind of like, you know, you can't, you know, you want to stay in the single digits, man. You can't have 0010, you know, that'd get weird. <laughs> you just have it would just be 010. Oh god. <laughs> or uh, or she But could then you wouldn't be a double O d- though, you know? Yeah, yeah, so be six. As soon as that, that left my mouth, I thought, well, they're double O agents, so they would have to be double O one hundred. Double O one ninety nine. The double O one thousand. No, uh, no no wait, yeah, I'm agree with Chris, or uh I forgot which one of you said, but uh, keep it to the single digits. Definitely, uh, but I think I, this fun from uh, Anna de Armas was great in Knives Out. I think this this is going to be a good role, and the other roles we just we we talked about here. Uh, but they've worked together; they like each other. I think she's going to be solid here. I think they're going to have a lot of fun, and just seeing that Craig's actually involved. He's actually he was involved with with the theme song with Billie Eilish here, which we'll get into, and, and <laughs> casting some of these characters and things like that. Um, so I, I mean, he's very heavily involved in the production of this movie. So I do feel good about that. Kind of going back to what we're talking about earlier. But these new cast, I talked about the two gals. We also have Rami Malek coming into this. Rami Malek, and uh, he's interesting. He's always a good. Uh, he's always a good character. Whatever he does, um, 
So I'm excited to see him as the villain. He's a little short, but I mean, that's okay. We can make it work. Um, he's going to, that being said, he looks like he's going to be far more cerebral than, you know, some of our other villains in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and his ultimate, like, um, kind of like his ultimate plan is kind of like why they also push this movie back for right? Uh, I do. Cause I, I do heard like the big some... plot had a big deal of pushing it back. Yeah, I think I mean, well, obviously, the main the main reason they pushed it back was just budgetary reasons and financial reasons. But I did think and the global I hear, bastard. Yeah, right. Because of the because of Corona. But I think there was a I think there might the plot might involve some kind of pandemic, a band made pandemic or something like that. I don't know mm-hmm. for sure, uh, based on what we kind of heard from some early rumors. Golly, man, can you imagine if that is the case, though, and they, they you know, they film this thing they get it in post they finish everything up and then a real pandemic hits because you know the, the studio is like <sighs> you know this is a little like, awkward yeah yeah awkward like, you know? or, um, or like uh, what if they released they actually released the virus right yeah you never know man so i mean that being said what do you guys think about these cast members coming in um i don't think i missed anybody but maybe i mean obviously we have uh, money penny coming back i mean uh what? Naomi, Naomi Harris. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Um, um, she's and, another uh, one. That's... Yeah. She's really oh, good um, as Money Penny. Ralph F- uh, Fiennes and Ben Wishaw. Please, and buddy. Christoph- it's it's uh, it's Ray Fines. Yeah, that. Hey, we do not speak uh, who uh, he who must not be named. I think that's pretty Bold much the, the bulk of it. Thank God, it, Chris. I have to we kill you think- now. If I'm what do you guys think effort. overall about these uh, cast members coming? In? I, I'm excited. Like, uh, like everybody just looks like they fit in and like into the whole world of the Bond, and um, it's just, it's just going to be good, man. And uh, they, again, they have a good bond with each other, no pun intended. And um, I'm I'm just excited, man. I really am. Yeah, I think that it, uh, the big thing for me is it looks like everyone's having a great time. All the interviews and everything that I've heard come out of, of everyone is that, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. Everyone had a lot of fun making it. And so I think that, you know, always lends itself to, you know, I think that shows up on screen. So I think uh, as far as the characters and everything, yeah, I mean, it's it's a big deal to have everyone back together. And, and I think that it's, uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. Woo! No doubt. And I will. Are you gonna? You are you gonna? You gonna dive into the villain at all? Uh, yeah. I mean, we we uh, Rami Malek. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, what do you think? You, you excited to see his portrayal as? Uh, yeah. Seven. Seven. Soften. 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 Seven. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's the one thing I wanted to say about that was that I really did enjoy that the trailer didn't give too much away. I mean, I think that he only has like maybe one or two shots in the entire trailer. Mm-hmm. And it yes, really doesn't yeah. give away uh, kind of hints at his plot, but doesn't really give too much away, you know, in terms of what what it actually is that he's, uh, you know, that he's trying to set up. So I just wanted to kind of talk about that and say, you know, I think that's kind of exciting. I thought some of the other ones in the trailers gave away a little bit, you know, and this one is is playing that his uh, that his villainous plot, if you will, close to the chest. And I think that's uh kind of aids in the uh excitement for the thing you know mm-hmm. oh Definitely. it's so smart and um yeah and i'm a big fan of that actor too uh pretty much everything you hand him he'll uh knock it right out of the park so uh, i'm looking forward to see his portrayal as a bond villain i am too man he, he's had a lot of good roles obviously academy award winner um i'm interested to see what he can bring to the table man what kind of man i tell you this franchise brings the best villains out there man it really uh, does. best best actors you could say uh for villains man we're talking uh christopher lee uh christopher walken christoph waltz and i'm just talking about the, the chris's at this point man i mean there's been a lot yeah. of them out there and uh yeah Actually, i mean obviously help me out with this because i actually thought about this on a drive like uh, from work um uh, is do you know who would be a really good like actor to be a bond villain i can't remember his name every time we do these uh recordings or live streams like i can never remember names but do you remember uh, one of the main villains in uh, wonder woman the general general kenobi no not general kenobi <laughs> but uh, you talking the, about you the know, first wonder woman 
Yeah, the first Wonder Woman, but uh, she was going after that like leader who they she thought it was Ares. Yes. Yeah, you, like you know his face. Like he could yeah. to me be, be a very good Bond villain. Yeah, I think you're right, man. Who's I just that? can't Who's remember his to? damn name. You're not talking about the dude. I can't remember. I can't remember who portrayed that role. I can kind of see it, but I keep thinking about Dan. Oh, it's uh Danny uh, Houston. I don't know you're yes. talking about. Yeah. Yeah, Danny. That Houston. sounds familiar. He would be uh he was a uh, uh, the villain in um 30 Days of Night. If you guys Yes, yeah, that. that's the guy. Remember me. Yeah, that's the guy. Like I think he could play a really good Bond villain in the future. That yeah, is true. Oh, he was all he was also like the middle aged uh, William Stryker in uh, like X two and yes he is in that uh, very bad uh, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine yeah so he's he's had a couple of uh, villainous turns uh, as but it is not already a good, so it's just not good writing yeah so I think that he is uh, actually I thought Thirty Days of Night was really fun well, not a good movie, okay but well, but I was like besides that one yeah but yeah I, I mean I think that he uh, he does make a good villain yes I thought you were gonna say Keith Carradine for some reason I thought that he would make a good like a <laughs> a I was good Bond Vincent, villain Vincent uh, what the fuck's his name from Vaughn uh, yeah no was Vaughn. <laughs> James Vaughn <laughs> uh, Vincent. Uh, uh, D'Onofrio, Daredevil, uh, guy, uh, freaking, oh, freaking, uh, Kingpin, Fisk, Wilson Fisk. Yeah, dude, uh, he would be a good a one. Damn, uh, is that Vincent? is it? Does it not D'Onofrio, Vincent? Yes, uh, from Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, pile. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> while we're talking about the cast, how do you think, uh, uh, uh Bert, your uh, background is? Uh, I know technology, story. man. Like uh, hey, Q, Q is uh, trying to try give me an upgrade. So, so while we're talking about the cast, how do you think Daniel Craig's age is going to jump in here? Do you think it's going to stand out? Do you think he's going to? He's the third oldest actor to play Bond in the franchise at this point. Obviously, behind uh, Roger Moore, who was sixty. I want to say he was sixty-seven. No, I'm sorry, not sixty. Fifty, fifty-seven. When he I did, I think it uh, was seventy-six. Roger Moore looked <laughs> old as fuck at the time. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Roger Moore. Probably my second favorite Bond. Maybe I don't know somewhere in there. But uh, a great Bond. But he was he looked old as fuck from the time that he started until the time that he finished. Am I right? He oh, he always yeah. did look old, man. But like yeah. towards the end, View to Kill, he was fifty-seven years old. Sean Connery was 53, I think, when he did Never See Never Again, which is a non-official uh, Bond film uh, that came out in the 80s. Um, Daniel Craig was 51 when they filmed this. I think he's 53 now, so I think he was 51 at the time, which isn't too bad. Uh, but he did kind of look older in Spectre. I think, I don't know, I think it was the way the movie was shot, though. Like, he just, they, the lighting they used was not flattering for him in Spectre. Like, he just did mm -hmm. not look... Uh, himself, really. Uh, and, in, in all the interviews and stuff, he looked fine, but in the movie, he just looked I don't know, but I, I don't know. I think he looks better in No Time to Die than he did in Spectre so far from what we've seen. But what do you think about the age? Yeah, uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up because like, I feel like his age, like Daniel Craig's age, will actually really apply well to this movie just because he did retire. So for mm -hmm. him to come back out of retirement, and, and we do you know like kind of like the time jump in the between Spectre and this movie? I don't, but based on the way Spectre ended, I'm thinking it's not going to be too far not, after. Not too um, far after. Yeah. Okay, that that would make sense, but like, but still, like, uh, just kind of like the age, like, and again, like I said earlier about like Bond being the old school versus the new Bond chick, uh, being the new school. Uh, so age, um, uh, is going to play a factor, but in the best way possible, in my opinion. I think so too. Yeah. I think uh, <clears throat> the storyline, like you said, the storyline uh, they they have here really, it works with uh, an older Bond, retired Bond. Yeah, and I hope they play into that as well. You know, in the movie where he's slowed down a little bit because of his age, you know. And I yeah, think, I think that, so. that that will be something to add to a little bit of the realism in there that he can't keep up. You know what I'm saying? Even though he, oh, I'm James Bond, you know. Um, but it, I think it will be it'll be interesting, more interesting to the story if he can't keep up with the new chick. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I agree. I think that would make things a lot more interesting. It'd be a lot better than what they did with Roger Moore and acted like he's, you know, just as old as normal. And he's out there still sleeping with 25 year olds in the movie when he's nearly 60. Um, yeah. So I, I think that would you play into that, make that a part of the story. It looks like that's what they're doing. And 
And, you know, going back to Kerry Joji, man, like, I mean, he he did that uh, age thing pretty well in True Detective with, you know, telling a, a, a story there. Three different the timelines, yeah. Three different timelines in that. Uh, so kind of showing an older, wiser version of the characters that we've known before. So, you know, maybe that's something that, you know, will bode well for him. So I think I think that's a good idea. I think that's the best way to take this thing at this point with Craig, you know, getting into his 50s now. So i'm interested i think it could work just fine i don't i think with the story they have selected here like you guys mentioned i think it bodes well for it mm -hmm. you know what i'm thinking too man i think that it, it could be really fun for him and the new chick if they have sort of like a um uh uh mad max and furiosa type scenario you know, where they really don't necessarily like each other but they know that they have to help each other if they want to you know that get, would be really cool what you know what they want accomplished or been fun what if that bitch is actually a bad guy no. could be the case man because they, be the because case. they already did that in quantum of solace when mitchell turned rogue or was just um was the feeling in that so it's a pot like that possibility is out there yeah Ooh. uh that's uh, he was the MI6 agent at the beginning. That oh, on. okay. I'm sorry. Yes. I yeah. When uh, Mr. White goes, uh, we got we're, we're everywhere. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that could be interesting. Yeah. Um, that could be interesting know, for man. sure. That would be heartbreaking. You know, it would be. It would be. Mm -hmm. I, I I do like that. Uh, I think that could be a fun dynamic because I I'd much be more interested. I would like to see. You know, we saw Bond when he was young in Casino Royale in this timeline. We saw him. You know, with this ego and his just freaking gung ho attitude, just fucking, you know, you know, his damn uh you know lack of due regard, so to speak, in his youth. And now it would be cool to see a more mature bond where he's not really interested in um, you know, being in everything that moves anymore, and he's just more interested in uh, you know, the mission essentially. Yeah. Um and just getting uh, to the end of it, like just getting something accomplished. But I will. Yeah, I, I had a thought pop up, and I don't. I, I uh, just have to. I had to get it out. What do we think if in that fight scene, it's like halfway through, right? And since she's the new 007, and there's like this passing of the torch moment where they had this huge fight, and then at the end of it, and I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Lashana Lynch's butt before, but maybe she does some kind of like backflip or something. And just clamps down on Bond's face, right? Pulls him straight down to the ground and just absolutely holds him there. And there's a scene where, you know, she's just like the camera's right up on her, and she, you know, she's just. Uh, uh. We cut to, you know, he's just in this big old butt, just like woo, woo. he's struggling, he can't get out. And this is like the ultimate passing of the torch to the new 007. He dies. He's smothered, you know, she, you know, puts her pants back on or whatever. And then she goes on and we follow her for the second half of the movie. That would be a that shitty way be... to die. <laughs> Are you that fucking be... kidding me? No, it would not. You know, that I mean, would be the only a way to go. <laughs> that would be the, the death for Bond, I think. I mean, I, I, yeah, I could see but... that. Xenio on the top. But I promise you this, Bond has no time to die in this movie. I'll tell you that for sure. That's true. He, because, he, hey, man, you bleeding. I ain't got time to bleed. I got no time to die. So You got that right. Um, so I'm interested in that, man. I'm interested in all that. Craig now, officially, now I don't know how true this is. I, this is based on just some little fun facts I was reading on the IMD Bizzle. Uh, but apparently... Kerry Joji is the first American director to direct a Bond movie ever. Mm -hmm. And now Daniel Craig is the first American actor to portray James Bond because apparently he is a United States citizen as of like right before this movie went to production. So um, he has yeah. dual citizenship though, right? I'm sure he does. I'm sure he yeah. does. It's just but a fun fact that I read. I, again, I don't know any of the you know validity behind it or anything. I didn't fact check it, but I just thought that was kind of interesting. But you got to triple check the double check. Exactly. And that's funny because I thought that Mark Forster was a was an American. But I did read that about CJF uh, being the first. Yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. I, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even uh, I would have yeah, I would have thought that there would have been one by now. But um, but either way, uh, 
What about so here's one thing else that I'm excited about and we haven't mentioned yet, and that's Hans Zimmer coming back because Spectre, or not coming back, but coming to the Bond franchise. Spectre, while I like the Skyfall soundtrack, Spectre pretty much just rehashed that and put it into that movie instead of come up with something new and unique. And mm-hmm. they've always done such a great job of music in the franchise. And uh, you know, that that kind of lacked with Spectre just because of that. And uh, you know, Casino Royale had great score. Not talking about the the Bond song that they use, but just the score in general. Right. Um, <laughs> Honestly, Quantum, Quantum had, was it was, yeah, was really nice as well. Quantum mm-hmm. had some good songs and there's good soundtrack as well. Uh, so Hans Zimmer, I'm really excited to see what he brings to the table. Oh, he's going. You know what? I just now things. I'd actually totally forgotten about that, and I I think that uh, if I'm thinking correctly, I th- he also did the score for Dune. So I think that. He's going to have like two two big releases uh, now. This in, in 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 two weeks in a row that he's going to have two big scores come out, and uh, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's what I was about favorites. to say. I was about to say it's coming out right before that. Um, that's awesome, and uh, he also he actually took over during post production, uh, from what I read too. Carrie uh, Joji usually has a different dude doing scores for him called Dan Romer. Uh, but they had some creative differences, and Hans Zimmer came in to take over the score. But I cannot that's wait. A pre- to see... <laughs> that's a pretty damn good replacement, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, dude. I cannot <laughs> wait to hear what he does with the Bond theme, and uh, obviously well, they've always done a really good job of incorporating in the Bond song into the score. Casino Royale was really good at that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think No Time to Die from Billie Eilish. I think it sounds really. I, I, I really dig it. I think it's cool. If you guys have mm-hmm. heard it. You know, let us know what you think about it. But I think I I would like to see, you know, if there's a way to kind of incorporate that into the Bond theme and kind of work things throughout the movie. I think Hans Zimmer could do that. And just to hear him play such a classic, compose such a classic uh, theme, I'm really excited to see what he does with it. Man. Oh, yeah. And uh, with the whole, uh, the beat, like the main theme song for Bond, uh, the first time I listened to it, I absolutely hated it. I just felt like, okay, this... Like, I don't like kind of like the tone and all that. And then I just, me and Brad were talking about it. And Brad's like, well, it could like incorporate to the slides of the story and all that. I'm like, oh, you know, let's give it another listen. Ten, ten listens later, I absolutely love it. And I can't get the song out of my head. Because the song really does, it's going to play a factor of kind of like what this story of No Time to Die is going to be about. I feel like the tone of that song is going to match the tone of this movie. So, like, uh, and they got a tremendous talent in Billy uh, being or doing this song too with her style. It's just, it, it's a match made in heaven. And I feel like, and I just can't wait for the score with Hans Zimmer. It's just, you know, it's going to be epic as hell. Do you think it's going to be a third? Academy Award in a row for best original song for a motion. I'll be picture. honest with you, absolutely. I think there's a good chance. Like I really, honestly, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I guess it depends on what else comes out. No, That's really, I don't. Ha- I don't have any issues uh, with the song. I love that Hans is coming in to do the score. Uh, looking forward to this and Dune. Probably looking f- more forward to Dune because I've heard a lot more about it about how they. Uh, they used so many different instruments and things like that to try and create the music for that. Um, but nevertheless, I, I'm, I'm really stoked that he came in to do this. I don't mind the song. I don't, I don't exactly love it. I mean, I love Billy, but I don't exactly love this particular song. And I, it could just be that I'm really bitter because, uh, you know, my favorite band Radiohead did the originally did the song for Spectre. And the producers said that it was too dark. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard the Radiohead Spectre theme oh, I didn't song. Know there was, I didn't know there was one, so I'm going to they be doing that denied. after this. Yeah, it's good. They got, they got denied. And uh, for me, I think that it is a far superior song than the Sam Smith uh, writing on the wall that we got. Not Nothing against, you know, against Sam Smith. They, yes, because that's a good yeah. song, too. Yeah, it's a it's a fine song. Uh, I just thought that the Radiohead song was a bit better, and the fact that they said that it was too dark, and then you can, you know, listen to Billy's song. And I mean, and my God, dark. yeah, I almost cut my wrist just listening to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, <clears throat> I mean, it almost propelled me into the darkness, dude. So I had to fight, <laughs> I had to fight off that urge. So 
I'm just like, you know, uh, so it could just be that I'm bitter about that a little bit, but it's a fine, you know, it's a fine. Well, song. shoot, uh, Quantum of Solace, uh, they had a uh, never theme too, and then they still went with the one with that one guy in the Alicia Keys, which Jack I did, yeah, which I had no idea Alicia Keys did the theme song for Quantum of Solace. Yeah, Jack White and, and, uh, and Jack Black. <laughs> that would have been <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> That would have been the best. Get Bond Jack, get, 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 get Jack Black from School of Rock. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm really excited to hear it, man. I, I think, I mean, again, I don't know what how much you can do with such a classic movie uh, soundtrack theme, if you will, but I think if, if anything can be tweaked and adjusted for, you know, obviously just, you know, not permanently but uh throughout the runtime of the movie i think hans would be the man to do it now i think i'm really excited to see what he can come up with and i think he might this is such a big ip i wouldn't say it's the biggest thing he's ever done because obviously he's been involved with a lot of big time movies but um it's something he might bring a lot of energy to and uh something that he might really uh, put a lot of work in to do something special here with the music so i'm really excited to see it i can't wait for the soundtrack to come out and uh you know, based on what we've heard so far, I would love, and this is just a, another side note back on Spectre. They came out with this for the trailer for Spectre. They, they re, they, uh, they did a, a new rendition of the theme from, uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service that sounded so damn good just for the trailer. And it did not make it into the movie for whatever reason. They did Skyfall music instead. I would love, it's such a good song. If you guys haven't heard it, go check it out. It's one of my favorite Bond themes of all time from uh under majesty's secret service i would love to kind of bring that back into this if he were to do something like that because it's so good um and you know something like that i think would be great uh but anyway just you know anything he could do to kind of spice things up i think it I, it's it could be something really special uh in the franchise here mm-hmm. yeah you know and something i was thinking about <clears throat> with that you know the original that classic theme that that's played on guitar uh i think um they could do a nice rendition of that. I think maybe if they incorporate some more guitars and stuff in there, they could that could be something really kind of fun and interesting in there. Kind of, um, you know, taking it back to the old school. <clears throat> Excuse me, taking it back to the old school a little bit. You know what I mean? Definitely. I think that could be fun. Uh, I think so too. Uh, so really, the last thing I had uh, jotted down here out of all that. Um, so. Because of all the delays and everything, and you know, all you know, this, this movie has been like in in post production. It's it's basically been completed for like two years now, almost. Yes, probably. This movie needs nine hundred million dollars just to break even at this point. Is that going to happen? I say no. It's going to be uh, a tough pill to swallow. Well, not, um, not in today's economy, man. No way. Yeah, pro- I would say more than likely no, but like uh, most of the money that the Bond movies make anyway are outside the uh, North America. Yeah, but it, just in general, it's yeah. it's tough to track to to to. It's tough so, to you- cross that one billion dollar mark. Uh, not a lot of movies do it. Um, see that's what they should see that's what this movie should have done they should have uh, accepted that deal from amazon because there was a point wasn't there that amazon was trying to buy this movie yeah amazon bought the studio yeah so like they should have played the freaking just you know offer a big thing like just on a- amazon exclusive and try to get money that way they technically own the movie M- now mgm yeah well i know that's what i'm saying just like suck like they could like should just release it when they, like just during a time where they didn't know. <laughs> well, okay, like uh, they just Suck like it. oh god, uh, but no, seriously, like um, like they could like Amazon should could just release it first, it's like because they had no idea of like, the whole pandemic and um, just like if theaters will ever change the game, so like they should just release it digital immediately. But now, like with it being two years, I am a little bit of afraid that uh, most people have forgotten about it, kind of like the Black Widow effect. I don't think it's going to be as bad as the Black Widow effect. I think most people are still going to go check out this bad boy in theaters, but that is a concern as well. And um, yeah, I don't think it'll meet its um, budget goal anyway. 
I'm going to be honest, man. If things keep going the way they're going, I would not be surprised to see this thing delayed to like December or something. It would not surprise Don't me. You at all. <laughs> Don't, Don't you, you put that hating. Don't you put that fucking evil on me. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not wishing that. I just, if it happens, I will not be surprised the way that we're going. I also think, regardless, if it is released in October, then. Uh, I don't think that it will maintain the 90 day theatrical window. I think it may be out in theaters for about four or four to six weeks. And then it'll be, um, uh, and then it'll be on, uh, streaming somewhere. I mean, obviously probably on Amazon. It's possible. Yeah. I think it's going to be tough, which sucks, man, because they put a lot of money into this thing and, just with the way, you know, the, you know, with the loans work and the interest on the loans for the movie and everything, it's just, it, I mean, the, it, they're fucked at this point. There's no way this is likely going to be the first Bond movie in the franchise to lose money. But it's um, not, but it's not going to be the movie's fault. It's just times. No. Yeah, you're right. It's not. Uh, it just sucks. I don't think it's going to impact much going forward. I mean, obviously they understand that they know that this was, you know, just a, a bad time to have a, a high budget movie mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And, uh, and, you know, that's that's kind of the world they're in. Hopefully it can recoup as much as it can. If it can break even and, and maybe make some money, that would be great. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, I doubt it's going to happen. I don't feel good about it. But, you know, at least now Amazon can, you know, they can they can deal with it. <laughs> it's not like they're not going to make more Bond movies in the future if this thing bombs. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I was about to say, man. There's a there's a they have a security blanket there. I mean, there is not. This is the 25th, if I'm not mistaken. Bond. This is 25, mm -hmm. right? 25. It's the 25th Bond movie. I mean, they're, this is not, even if it's it, official. you know, uh, you know, even if it does fall apart, it's not going to be the last Bond movie. The real one that I worry about is Dune, because I think that if it, it is such a huge budget movie, if it does not make some back, then we will not get the sequel. We will not get the other half of the first book, and that'll be a fucking travesty. That'd be very sad. What's the budget on Dune? I think it's it's like between one fifty and two hundred. Sure, might do one one sixty five. I think so. October's got a lot of competition, man. A lot of competition between yeah, no. uh, between this Halloween and Dune, <clears throat> and uh, uh, let there be carnage too with the Marvel fans. Uh, I think I even think, though I, that even, that was stupid for them to move it up to the October fifteenth. Yeah, because what else is that day? Hell, uh, that's Halloween, Halloween kills. kills. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, so yeah. no one's gonna like it, it'll still get his fans. But anyway, besides the point, yeah, <laughs> I am worried about no time to die with the October competition. That is a little bit of a concern as well. That's why I was suggesting it to be in November because all the other Bond movies, like the Daniel Craig ones, came out in November, and that's why that has such um, success with their numbers. So I feel like they really should. I could probably, I would even say to consider the moving it to November, in my opinion. Well, you know, you, one thing you got to think about is this thing's going to come out in September in the UK, which is going to be obviously where it makes a lot of money, mm -hmm. ideally. Um, so it's going to come out a little early there, and and you know, hopefully it'll it'll do well. Um, I think it's going to be fine. I mean, it, at this point, they know they're going to lose money. Probably they just need to get it out there so they can quit racking Savage. up interest. You know, yeah, like they they, yeah. they got to get it out there and they got to they got to do something with it at this point, because right now it's just been racking up debt. You know that I think it's a like a four hundred million dollar budget or whatever. Of course, now it's been, you know, skyrocketed out of out of proportion. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Yeah, but I'm, you guys have anything else like specifically about the movie you guys want to tackle or uh you feel pretty good about what we what we went over? Nah, I feel like we uh, nailed it for the most part, unless if Chris has something. No, I just want to talk about some of the rumors that were going around and see what if you guys gave any clout to those about uh, Bond possibly having a child Ooh. or uh, a mm. child or have someone else having a child or something like that. I know that I read this somewhere, but I don't remember exactly what it was. Hang on, but Bond, Bond always has protection, though, so I don't I'm not sure about the possibility. I don't know that he's ever used protection a single time. <laughs> It doesn't seem like somebody that he carries his Glock. <laughs> Austin Powers does. What <laughs> yeah, uh, but, uh, no, but seriously, uh, baby. but no, with that that rumor to me just seems so far fetched, foe, and just so out of character the a Bond. It's far fetched, I think. So I, again, it all it all comes back to what they want to do with the franchise. This is a weird situation the franchise is in. For the very first time, 
they have a string of movies. I mean, they loosely did this in the 60s with Connery, but they have a string of movies that follow the same storyline. And it, each movie builds and builds and builds based on what the other one did and, and continues diving down this road. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting dynamic because now you're at a crossroads, what you're going to do with it, because Craig's leaving. You've you've wrote the character to kind of match Craig's age and whatnot at this point, so it's kind of like just recasting and continues going to be weird. But you know, uh, uh, you know, you, you reboot, you kind of you have to start from scratch again. So I don't I don't know. It's a crossroad for sure, um, and it it all harpens back to what they want to do with that. If he's if they're doing something, you know, where they keep this continuity alive, maybe he does have a kid, and maybe he's an agent. I don't know. Um, but, I know, you know that I read that, but I, the bigger the bigger one here that I did want to talk about also is that uh, much like uh, you know, remember there was this big smoke screen about uh, Christoph Waltz being a Blofeld and he had a different character name and so on and so forth. Yes, uh, there's a big rumor going around that we're getting the same thing here and that Rami Malek's character is actually the uh, Doctor No. Ooh, Ooh, now that one I like. I could I could totally sign see me, that. Sign man. me up for that. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Again, it's a little weird with all these freaking twists, man. They keep doing it. They did it with Money Penny. They did it with Blofeld. They did it. I mean, they just keep doing it. But see, that rumor, I'm I will be high on the ever rumor, not so much. Yeah, I could totally. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, the 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 rumor there that that I heard or the um was that there was uh there was a call sheet which uh makes a makes a reference to a child character in the early scenes in Jamaica that would uh, possibly hint that him and uh, Miss Swan have a child together. And okay, then maybe man, that, Bond, um... Bond is a daddy. And so then maybe if Swan dies, you know, then maybe that, that kicks that revenge definitely in there because then he's trying to protect his, his daughter. But then again, that will uh, display the question I asked earlier. What's the time frame between Spectre and No Time to Die? It must be nine months at least. <laughs> well, well, Chris is well, Chris is saying kids running around. You really feel like a uh, one week old um, infant is just going to run around little less like freaking Deadpool at Deadpool two. Go. That that's interesting. I like that. Now that you mentioned it, it makes sense because Jamaica is where Doctor Noah said. Um, so mm. it would it would totally make sense for them to kind of go back uh down there. And I think, oh, I mean, buddy, he looks he looks the part. I think, uh, man, that I could totally see that. And I, honestly, I think it kind of fits the mo from Doctor No. I feel like he was kind of going for the same vibe, eradication by any means necessary. I I could see that happening. I could totally uh, see that happening. Y'all just you're making me crazy. <laughs> I like that, Chris. I think that's a good that's a good mm-hmm. rumor. Yeah, man. It's not the rumor. uh, It's not the (laughs) rumor. It's not a rumor. So, yeah, so you guys think that uh, it's more likely that he's Dr. No, huh? I'm I'm high on that rumor. I think, yes, I I, I will buy that one. I will put my money on that one. Yeah, and Brad even brought it up, too. Like, again, they did with Money Penny. They did with Ernest Blofeld. So might as well go three for three. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it, man. I'd be for that. Bring it full circle, man. Full circle. Was Madeline Swan a double O agent? No. no. She it's was just... uh d- Mr. White's daughter. Was yeah. it not wait, was it Mr. White? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like and plus like so she knows a life of the spy too. So that's why I feel like um she's good at hiding things, especially the truth, and that's like what sets Bond off. Oh man. Yes. I don't know, man. Either way, I'm fucking excited about this movie. I, I so can't I, wait. I'm looking at some set photos on here, and I don't want to get too spoilery or anything like that. But I think that it the it looks like Madeline Swan has a child, whether it's Bonds or not. Maybe it's uh, Rami Malek's character or something like that. I don't know. And that's what she's that been hiding. That could be the fucking bombshell. Maybe that's what uh, Bond is. Oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe the movie opens and Bond thinks that they have a child together, and then it's revealed that Rami Malek is the, the is the father. But again, that's that. that's just going to ask yeah, the question again. See? What's the time frame? I could tie in. Well, it says here that it was a five year old that was uh, that was playing the scene, so it has to be a certain amount of time. I'm going to say they almost go with a Dark Knight Rises 
scenario, and I think that it's probably like five years or more. I could buy that for a dollar. Uh, maybe. I. That's tough, man. That's a... That's good. They've done a good job of keeping things kind of hit, especially for a movie that should have been yeah, especially out the over a year ago. Yeah, because um, I mean, Spectre fucking fell apart big time. Yeah, I remember. Remember that the script leaked, like everyone knew exactly what was going to happen. I think I even read the script, and they didn't even bother to change it. I don't think much, if memory serves. I'm surprised yeah. they wrote a script for that one. It, anyway, uh, so I think uh, I think this one, yeah, man, I, they've done a good job of keeping things. The storyline overall, they gave you very little in the trailer. Um, so I, yeah, I'm pumped, man. I just can't wait to see what they do. I really keep my fingers fingers crossed that Greg can give my us one fingers. more really good performance. Fingers crossed. Hmm. I, I do suspect foul play. I'm really hoping we can get uh, <laughs> Craig back for one really solid performance to, to take him home and uh, just excited to see where this thing leaves the franchise. Yeah, same here, buddy. I don't know, man. I got to tell you guys, I think there's something going on with the kid. I think that it it that means too much, especially with all of his philandering and how much that is like a central part of his character. I think for him to become a father in this one would it's be... Just put a complete spin on that entire thing yeah just so far out of left field for me and it's just uh it's just to me it just doesn't match up really because that's not who bond is i could buy it. it's not who bond traditionally is but this is bond that we've seen five times now grow as a character have character arcs go different directions we've seen him as a youth we've seen him now he's older so this is this isn't bond from the first 40 years of the bond saga this is a different bond here uh, for all intents and purposes i mean you know obviously it's the same kind of deal based off the novels and everything but this is the first time we've seen any kind of character development um in a string of movies in his uh in you know in his existence 40 years yeah yeah 40 50 50 years 50, now? what is 50 it 50 years 50, yeah. Oh, yeah actually 60 now oh shit yeah yeah, oh yeah, because when did the fifty year and the set come yeah, out? It's ten years ago when Skyfall came oh, out. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Fucking A. That's wild. Um, well, okay. You got, you got anything else, Bert? No, I'm solid. Rock okay, solid. Man. Oh gosh. Like a rock. Just <laughs> just cl- just, cl- just close it, Al. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fine. Nah. I'm just kidding. Uh, so re raid the take everybody home. Yes. All right, let's take everybody home. So guys, yes. what did what are your thoughts about No Time to Die? Are you super jacked like we are about it? And uh, Chris is uh, child theory down there, or uh, do you have some real concerns about the movie? Let us know in that comic section down below, and let's get that discussion rolling. And if you want to find a good reels, you can do so by finding us on Facebook, Instagram, Letterbox, Twitter, Snapchat, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TikTok. Those links are in the description for you to find down below. Absolutely, and do not hit the mic. And be sure to like this video, share, and subscribe. And of course, ring that bell. Ding, ding, ding. So you know when the Daniel Craig Bond content is up and ready. It's coming right around the corner, my friends. Oh. We will. Oh. We will. Oh. <laughs> uh. Hey, uh. Grab your martinis, and we'll see you at the poker table next week. Oh, yeah. See you guys. Oh, oh.